Boys and gents, welcome to Jurex, and this is End of Space, creating a prison for humanity by the channel Kuzgazad in a nutshell. Space travel is the most exciting adventure for humanity, but in an irony of history, we may stop ourse ourselves from going into space the more we do it. With every rocket launch, we are creating a deadly trap for mankind, okay? Another space video from Kuzgazad, obviously, is gonna be awesome. Uh, I've written quite a few Kuzgazad videos already. If you haven't seen them, check out the cards. There's a playlist I've written for it. Kuzgazad reactions, something like that, with all of my Kuzgazad reaction videos. Uh, check out other playlists too, like History, Mowgli Sakashi Production, CGP Grey, Internet Historian. Yeah, let's watch this one. Space travel is the most exciting and challenging adventure humanity has ever undertaken. But in an irony of history, we may stop ourselves from going into space the more we do it. With every rocket launched and with every satellite deployed, we're creating a trap for ourselves that gets deadlier and more dangerous every year. If it's ever activated, it could end the space age and trap us on our planet for decades or even centuries. What? What is all this? What is he talking about? Okay, I think he's gonna talk about space debris, right? Because that's the only thing I can think of. Otherwise, how is launching launching rocket creating a trap? I'm pretty sure he's talking about space debris, which is tons of there. Getting something into space is incredibly hard. To do so, you need to move very, very fast, at first straight up to leave the atmosphere, then sideways to begin a sort of circling around the Earth, still very, very fast. If you do that successfully, you can enter a low Earth orbit. Leo. And once in orbit, it's very hard to get out of orbit. Unless you have energy to spare, you're sort of locked in here, falling around the Earth forever. That's great for things we want to stay up, like space stations and satellites. Yeah. And so we moved the majority of humanity's space infrastructure to this place, just a few hundred kilometers above the surface. Just high enough so that the atmosphere is so thin that orbiting things can stay up for centuries before air resistance can slow them enough to bring them back to Earth. But this is all so yeah, low Earth orbit. People think in low Earth orbit, obviously you you know got out of Earth's atmosphere and it's just floating there without any air particle or anything. That's not true. There are air particles, but they are very thin, and it's not equal on the planet. And some sections there are more air particles on top than the other section. This is why you know uh, they constantly adjust the height of Hubble telescope because sometimes it hits the air particle and it's you know brings it down towards the Earth. So they have to rise it up again by the boosters and things. Also the source of our deadly trap. Rockets are really metal cylinders that keep big piles of fuel in place. Whenever a portion of the fuel has been spent, the empty tanks are dropped to make the rocket lighter. Some parts crash down to Earth or burn up in the atmosphere. But most of the useless rocket parts stay up and begin to orbit the planet. After hey. decades of space travel, low Earth orbit is a junkyard of spent boosters, broken satellites and millions of pieces of shrapnel from missile tests and explosions. Right now, we know of around 2,600 defunct satellites, 10,000 objects bigger than a monitor, 20,000 as large as an apple, 500,000 pieces the size of a marble, and at least 100 million parts so small they can't be tracked. This debris is moving at speeds of up to 30,000 kilometers per hour. Well, this is just low Earth orbit debris, right? <laughs> 30,000 kilometer. Wait a minute, what is the speed of high speed collision? Right? I mean, uh, basically, in, basically in space, in physics, high speed collision just means that uh, certain objects has more kinetic energy, more speed than the molecular bonds of it. So when it collides, it basically explodes because, you know, all that kinetic energy suddenly transport, you know, transfers into the object and that energy is more than the molecular bonds that are holding that object. So in the end, it explodes. That's why all the asteroid impacts creates the round shape rather than, you know, different type of, basically. So 30,000 kilometers, wouldn't that be, you know, just fast enough to create explosions, right? So all these shards and things, if they hit a rocket or satellite, won't they just explode? Holy shit, 30,000 kilometers, right? I think it would be like something like 60, 70,000 kilometers. But I don't know. It depends on the object too, so. 
circling Earth on crisscrossing orbits multiple times a day. Orbital speeds are so fast that being hit by debris the size of a pea is like being shot by a plasma gun. On impact, the debris vaporizes, releasing enough energy to punch holes straight through solid metal. There you go. So that small shard would create an explosion, but explosion for its size, basically. So some small shard would definitely explode enough to punch a hole inside anything, like, uh, you know, uh, basically ISS space station or something like that, a rocket or something, some satellite, or if some unfortunate soul is outside of a space station or whatever doing repairs, that's it. So, we've covered the space around our planet with millions of deadly pieces of destruction. And we also put a trillion dollar global infrastructure network right in the danger zone. Yes, yes. It performs critical duties essential to the modern world. Global communication, GPS and navigation, collecting weather data, looking out for asteroids and all manner of scientific discoveries. Things we would miss very much if they suddenly went away. If just one pea-sized bullet hits one of our 1,100 working satellites, it will be destroyed instantly. Three or four satellites are already being destroyed this way every year. Damn. As the number of satellites and the amount of... Yeah, I think the chances are low for the sake that, you know, every satellite is, when they launch it, they launch it in the same kind of direction. There's uh, some rule type of uh, like that. I mean, they're not going. To, they're not going to send one satellite that rotates, it, you know, from the left side. Another satellite that rotates from the right side. They are all going to do it from the one side, right? I don't know how else to say this, but yeah. So any debris would be, you know, uh, if there is any debris, that debris is going to be from the same direct. They will go from same direction as satellites, and they are in that orbit, right? So they will be somewhat similar speed. Right, because if too much speed, they would shot out from the Earth and too higher, like you know, middle uh, Earth orbit or you know, geosynchronous orbit, they would just shot out up there. If they are slow, they would go inside the Earth. So they are kind of in similar speed, and if they are going the same direction, chances of hitting is kind of low. But yeah, some of the debris could be coming from the, I guess, sideways or from the opposite direction. That would be disastrous. Junk in orbit is expected to grow tenfold in the next decade. We're approaching a tipping point. But the worst thing in space is not tiny pieces of junk. The worst thing would be an unstoppable chain reaction that turns a lot oh, yeah. of non-junk things into junk. For example, if two satellites hit each other in just the right way. If satellites collide, they don't stop and fall out of the sky. It's more of a splash than a crash. Orbital speeds are so fast, solid pieces spray right through each other transforming the two satellites into clouds of thousands of little things still fast enough to destroy more satellites. All right, I don't know much math about this, but, you know, uh, low Earth orbit, you know, basically satellites uh, rotate the Earth every 90 minutes, right? They are really fast. So if the two satellite is coming from opposite direction, they will be fast enough to, like I said, explode and just send out all this debris around. So, you know, maybe that might happen. But the point is, uh, you know, the Trump said, uh, you know, one thing Trump said, like, Space Force, and everybody just made fun of him. Actually, that was the one thing that I'm like, hmm, this is the one thing that Trump's going to do that probably going to stick around and would be pretty significant. Because Space Force is not that stupid when you think about it. Just because Trump said it, it's not stupid, right? Everybody just assumed, oh, Trump said it, it must be stupid. No, Space Force is kind of common sense when you think about it. Like, you know, U US Space Command is already part of Air Force, right? That is kind of like Space Force. Making its own division is not a bad thing. And it will basically force people to think about space and the orbits, basically, right? Right now, nobody gives a shit about space. I mean, people like us do, but, you know, people in power, they don't care. That's why, you know, NASA's budget is not going that much high. I mean, it is, going, it is increasing, but it's because of inflation, not that that budget is going higher. But, yeah, nobody's caring. But if military cares about it, right? Everybody pours money into military. And if military cares about it, there could be, you know, programs to clean out all this space debris. So if entire planet, now with all the different agencies in India, in China, everybody's creating this kind of a space agencies. And now US too. And now they create a space force. Other countries will see that, will create something similar to that. And they might reach a pact where they spend money to actually clear out the space. That would be a good thing. The only way that can happen is some something like military gets involved, right? 
So Space Force might be a thing that could clear all this debris because there is a lot of debris there. There's a NASA's website. If you go there, they show you all the debris that is, you know, basically orbiting the Earth. Even the games like Mass Effect, when you visit the Earth, they say that there is too much space debris there. Watch out or something like that. This could trigger the slowest and most destructive sort of domino effect, a collision cascade. Like a shotgun spray, each collision creates more bullets. Yeah, what was once two, a single two, tiny three. target, yeah. very unlikely to hit anything, becomes a wall of destruction, hungry reaction. to make more. As more and more satellites are destroyed, the destruction accelerates exponentially, eventually destroying everything parked in orbit. But space is very empty, so the first few collisions may take a long time. By the time we realize what's happening, it's too late. One year, one satellite is destroyed, and that's no big deal. The next year, five. The year after, 50, until there's nothing left. The situation in orbit is rapidly worsening, and we may already be past the point of no return. Within 10 years, space around Earth may no longer be viable for long-term satellites or rockets. The worst-case scenario is horrifying. A debris field made of hundreds of millions of pieces, many too small to track, moving at 30,000 kilometers per hour. It would effectively create a deadly barrier around Earth, possibly too dangerous to cross. Dreams of moon bases, Mars colonies, or... Yeah, I think that's a bit strong. I'm pretty sure somebody could come up with some kind of a, uh, you know, solution to clear out the debris, right? I mean, people come with really ingenious solution. Engineers and scientists band together and they come up with really, you know, sometimes you feel like some makeshift things, but, you know, they are incredible. Right now, the point is nobody's caring about it, right? Nobody's putting budget on that. Right. Otherwise, if somebody really, you know, some countries really band together and just say, OK, this is the multi-billion dollar budget, clear out the space debris. NASA and all the other agency and all the you know great scientists of the world definitely can come up with something that could clear out the debris. It's not that up. But if we reach a tipping point where lots of satellites are getting destroyed, then I think countries would suddenly you know, jump to this like, OK, let's clear the space debris because it's costing trillions now. So that's, this is not like, you know, asteroid is coming, it's going to kill us and no point of return type of thing. This is an issue that I guess uh, if people realize it and do something what is good, but if they don't, then it, there's going to be trillion dollar damages and then they're going to clear it. But they're going, they're going to have to clear it eventually anyway, because we rely on satellites a lot. Space travel at all may be set back centuries. And the loss yeah, of our yeah, space infrastructure would send some of the technology we rely on daily back to the 1970s. Yeah, seriously. But it might not be too late to clean up our mess. While the space industry has become better at avoiding space junk, it's still growing fast and occasional weapon tests don't help. So there have been a couple of wild but also serious suggestions about how to quickly remove as much deadly space junk as possible without creating more in the process. Lots of ideas are being thrown around, and some of the most seriously considered involve capture and return missions, which are being tested now. One method involves meeting a piece of junk in orbit with a small satellite loaded with a net. Once caught, a small rocket could be used to bring it down towards Earth. <laughs> it's literally like cleaner, right? If somebody has a party, the party finishes in the morning, somebody, you know, cleaner just walks around with some kind of a net and just clean out all the <laughs> all the cups and things. There's literally that because there is no other option. You can't just, you know, throw a massive net there and just, you know, hover there while all the debris can, you know, can catch it because all the debris is, you know, coming out really fast, 30,000 plus kilometers per hour. So that would kill the net. So you have to go alongside the debris, see the debris and catch it like that. Targets too large for a net might be instead caught with a harpoon on a tether. Instead of firing a rocket, the cleaner would deploy a large sail to produce atmospheric drag and accelerate orbital decay. And there are lots of other wild sci-fi sounding proposals too. Some might use giant electromagnets. These magnetic tugs work by pushing on the magnetic components inside satellites that they use to stabilize and orientate themselves in Earth's magnetic field. These may be safer and more reliable than nets and harpoons because they never have to make contact with the junk they're handling, so there's no risk of accidentally breaking up their target into more junk. 
as yeah knowing how our uh, knowing how you know everybody basically goes to the simplest answer i think we're gonna go with the nets and harpoon then the magnetic one magnetic one feels like somebody really come come up with ingenious solution where everybody's like nee, the cost is a bit too high i think we're gonna go with the net as for the tiniest bits of junk lasers might be the key to vaporizing them entirely satellites oh, yeah. with lasers wouldn't need to visit their targets they can shoot them from far away yeah precision large objects can't exactly be shot down precision is not something far fetched thing we already have precision when it comes to things like this we just have to track it perfectly nasa is already tracking most of the things small debris i mean yeah, you know we can track it if we really wanted to if we want to clear it so yeah laser would work perfectly um, but lasers can be used to ablate them or burn tiny amounts of material off the side to push the junk to a safer orbit whatever technology we used in the end we better start doing something soon how about all before 100 million bullets become a trillion and the trap is set if we don't act our adventure in space might end before it's even begun if our days of dreaming about space exploration might be numbered anyway we better put them to good use one of the things we most like to spend our time on is learning more about our universe yeah, we will go to brilliant.org for slash nutshell and support this channel. Yeah, this is one of the great science channels there is. Yeah, uh, space debris is a real issue. <laughs> you know, I played Mass Effect and, you know, I saw how description said, I'm pretty sure it was that game. Yeah, in Mass Effect, the description says there is lots of space debris and I'm like, damn, even the game is mentioning it. This is a real issue. And then I saw the NASA's website, right, which tracks all the, you know, debris and it's just countless number like, holy shit. There's way too much debris, and this is just a matter of few decades, right? We did that in a matter of a few decades. Imagine in a few centuries, if we don't control this, how things are going to go. But with, you know, how Elon Musk created a reusable rocket, that probably would, you know, lower the all the debris that can be out there. So, yeah. Now, from now on, we can be sensible, but for all the debris that is already out there, we have to do something about it, otherwise it will become a problem. Robbie, well, that was the end of space. I think that's a bit strong. I don't think it's going to be end of space. I mean, we already have ingenious ideas. I'm pretty sure people can come up with really ingen ingenious ideas. But it will depend on people will smart enough before or when they are forced to. And we already lose trillions of dollars or satellites and things. And all the business in the process. But we will eventually clear it, right? It's not going to be end of space. All right, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the reaction. I did this link in the description. Check out the cost of the link cards. And yeah, I'll see you next time.